Hey everybody, this is a quick tip about creating actions for things like uh, head turns. So basically what we're going to talk about is how I can use a smart bone to um, transform an object from one view into another view. And specifically what we're going to talk about is how I can use uh, a view to get the uh, keyframes associated with a view in frame 0 and copy them into an action at a frame other than 0. So let's talk about what that means and why I would want to do that. So here's the Jace character and I've made a number of modifications to that and in a previous video I've shown how you can have uh, different views like the front view um, and then the three-quarter view and even the profile and how I can have a smart bone um, that will allow me to uh, turn the head but then when I get to a certain place it actually switches and you can see it a little bit here um, it actually switches to a different view now why do I want to do that I, I do that because when you do all kinds of things like um, manipulating the eyes and the eyebrows and the mouth and you try to get all the points to align properly um, at any per, any different view um, sometimes those points can be off a little bit and it, it looks ugly or messy but for example in the primary view of the front view um, I can create the character exactly like that I want that character look to look and same thing for the three-quarter view I can create the character how I would like him to look and same thing for the profile. But everybody likes that smooth head turn and so how can we do that? What we can do is we make it so that as I move that head it eventually moves to that position in the three-quarter view and then notice these lines here uh, at that place I switch over to the other head. And to know more about that in detail um, you can see uh, the tutorial about um, Jace. But what I want to show here is how to do that a little bit easier. So let's talk about what's involved here. Um, so when I'm doing that head turn um, I need to create an action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the head turn action and then go to the head and we can see that we've got these keyframes here on frame 17 and what I have done is I have moved all of the points associated with that front view until they align exactly with the three-quarter view so I do that for the head or the face um, layer and then I do that for all of the other layers as well and you'll notice that there's keyframes all on frame 17. Now that works but there's two problems with it. One is it's very tedious to go in and move all the little points but the other thing is in order to do this I actually have the action open and um, I'm actually making keyframes here while that action is open and I don't know about you but that just kind of makes me a little nervous and sometimes I make mistakes and sometimes the action closes I click on something and and maybe even the uh, program might shut down or something so it's not something I really like doing so let me go back to the main line and what's much easier for me let me go ahead and delete these keyframes here on the on the bone layer but what's much easier for me is to um, actually work with the character in each specific view. So, for example, if I go to the head and I go back to frame zero and work with that character and move the points till I like them in the main line, that feels very comfortable. So now, as in a quick aside, if you have, if you're not familiar with this, and this is Moho 12, I'm going to turn on the filter name contains and type in head here, and that will just show me all the head layers and its parents. So in this particular case, um, what I want to do is I want to um, work with 
the head in the three-quarter view. So when I'm looking at that, if I could just copy all those points and say, that's what I want to look at. I want it to look like on the action. And make uh, the front view, if I could just make it look exactly like the three-quarter view and make that part of the action, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, so let me show you how to do that, but I'm going to do that on a, a simpler um, example just so it's easier to follow. And you just would do this for each of the vector layers. So to start off with, I'm just going to delete this uh, view too. And we've just got um, a, a normal vector layer that I'm just going to call view 1 because so, it doesn't really matter what the view is. Um, and what I want to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer and I'm going to call it view 2. So it's important that both view 1 and view 2 have uh, the same set of points. That's why we did the duplication, but that's what you need um, when you do the head turn anyway. So as you look at the um, layers here, what we've got, I'm just going to call it object. Typically this might be a head or eyes or something like that, but head for a head turn. And then we've got view, so there's a switch layer. So you could think of view 1 is like the front view and view 2 is the three-quarter view or vice versa. And the marker uh, vector layer, that's just a line here that tells me when I would switch over to the other view. So I can visually see that on the screen. And again, go back to the JS 3.0 tutorial if you want to understand that a little bit. And then, of course, we have this all within a bone layer so I can create that action. So uh, let's go to view two. And I'm just going to move the points however I want. Just it doesn't really matter. But we're going to just make it quite a bit different looking um, than the other object. So view one looks one way and view two is quite a bit different. So the goal is within the action for view one to look just like view two. Okay, so I'm going to go to the bone layer and I've already created a, a smart bone dial and it's called turn. And we can see I, I like just to use 24 frames here, that's all we need. And I've set the bone angle to end at 24. And so right around here, right, that's where we want to do the switch. So I'm going to come to this frame right here, and that's when I want to do the switch uh, right there. Because that's where that marker is. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to the main line, and I'm going to go to view 2 because that's the one that I want it to look like. And I'm going to have the Select Points tool selected, and do control A so that all the points are selected. I'm going to go ahead and move the uh, cursor, uh, timeline cursor off of frame 0. And I'm just going to um, click anywhere. And actually, let's go ahead and use the, tran uh, the transform points tool and just move it wherever. And the really cool point about this is it doesn't matter where you've moved the points. You've just selected all the points and you've moved them um, somewhere. And you can change the curvature of them too. So if you have curvature or whatever properties that you want to deal with. And it doesn't matter what you do because we're not interested in this keyframe. We're interested in the keyframes that are automatically created at frame zero. And also, since we're at the main line, you feel very comfortable with this because you've been doing animation and it's not a problem. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to the timeline and I'm going to select um, the key frames at frame zero for all of the selected points. I'm just going to do Control C to copy that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to view one and I'm going to open up the turn. But let's go to the bone layer because I forgot exactly where that was, what frame that was, and I'm going to scrub until right there at frame 17. Now I'm going to go to view one. Oops, don't need to open it up. And I'm going to now paste the keyframes. And look, 
that's exactly what view one looked like. So as we go over here, we see that I go back and forth between view one and view two and they look exactly the same. Now that's that's the main point that I wanted to show so that now um, it's very easy to match those two things. Now typically what I would do at the next frame if you wanted to do this switching um, like in JS 3.0 at that one here uh, that's where I would select the different frames and we can see here I've already had that keyframe here so just make sure that view um, one is selected here actually let's go back to here and we should make sure that view one is the object that we want until we get to frame 18 and so at frame 18 that's where we want to switch to view two okay and so that way it will actually switch over to the other layer okay so let's go back to the main line and we can see ooh, there's all this kind of craziness going on there um, and view one we go back to uh, excuse me view two and get rid of those keyframes that we had created and now you can see there's there's no action at all so we can go back to the bones and we can see as I move that bone we start off uh, we should say that at frame zero I forgot to set at frame zero we want to set uh, the view to start off at view one because that's what we want so now as we take the scrubber off on a different line we see as I move the bone it will switch to that other second view and we've actually switched to view two in this region over here so I can do however I w make any kind of movements that I want and it's anywhere in between you know and all the way at the very uh, view view one and then all the way to view two so any of the different in-between uh, views can be there so um, I hope that's helpful you can then you know use that technique for eyes mouth um, head and so anything and you see how very quick it is maybe it's a little bit complex at first uh, so if you don't understand it just watch the video a couple of times but I think it might be really helpful if you like to do those head turns okay well hope you enjoyed it have a good day